Hello everyone, and welcome to the CSS Security Mini Briefing, where we will present a short summary of what was released today, January 9th, 2024. My name is Josh Daniel, and I'm a risk manager in the customer service and support organization here at Microsoft. We're going to start this video with an overview of the release, and then we'll dive into a few of the vulnerabilities. Please note that the details of the vulnerabilities we are covering in this video may change, and the authoritative location for information will always be the online content in the security update guide. Now, before I dig into today's release, I like to compare it to the previous 12 months to see how it stacks up. We've been averaging just under 76 total new CVEs in each release. This month we have 49 newly disclosed vulnerabilities. So a little bit, quite a bit lower than what we've been seeing over the past year or so. And because there are fewer total vulnerabilities, we'll see a few lower numbers than, than we typically would. For example, with remote code execution vulnerabilities, these are the ones that typically provide the most risk. It would allow a threat actor to install malicious software. We've been averaging just under 27 of these per month. This month, there are 12 remote code execution vulnerabilities in today's release. Next, I'll talk about scoring, where Microsoft uses the industry standard Common Vulnerability Scoring System, or CVSS. This is a scale that goes between one and 10 and allows software vendors, hardware vendors, to be able to compare different vulnerabilities across different products and get a, a base level gauge of, of the risk level of the vulnerability. One thing I'll point out about the, the scoring system, it doesn't take into account everything about a vulnerability. It's more of how this vulnerability stacks up in a bubble. For example, it does not measure whether the vulnerability is known to be exploited out in the wild, whether it was publicly disclosed, the impact such as remote code execution, or the severity such as critical or important. It's only specific to this vulnerability and how it stacks up across eight different vector strings that compose the CVSS score. So it's a good starting point, but it doesn't contain every point of risk that, that may be involved here. This month, the highest scored vulnerability comes in at 9.1, and we've been averaging almost 9.6 for, for that average over the past year. Next, the average CVSS score across the entire release comes in at 7.04, which is quite a bit lower than our average of 7.30 over the past 13 months. There are no publicly disclosed vulnerabilities in today's set. We've been averaging just under one. And finally, there are no vulnerabilities that are known to be exploited out in the wild two months in a row at zero. And we've been averaging around 1.8 over the past year. Next, I'll move to our overview chart where we put the Windows products towards the bottom part of the slide. And then as we move up, we get into products that are not serviced every single month. For the Windows products, we've been averaging in the mid 40s over the past year or so. And so, as I mentioned towards the top of, of this video, the total numbers are going to be lower and that's what we see here with mid 30s for most Windows products with a couple outliers down in the mid 20s. As we move up the chart, Microsoft Office has two vulnerabilities this month. There's also .NET Framework and Visual Studio and the developer tools that, that have vulnerabilities this month. And finally, SQL Server has one vulnerability that I'll talk to in just a few minutes. So let's dive into the first vulnerability that I'll talk to in this video. This is CVE 2024-20674. This is a critical security feature bypass vulnerability, privately disclosed, no known exploits out in the wild. This has a base score of 9.0 on that scale of 10. The attack vector is adjacent. The attack complexity is low. Privileges required is low, and user interaction here is none. There are no documented mitigations or workarounds. And as far as affected software, it's all versions of, of Windows that are in mainstream support, whether it's Windows 10 or 11 on the desktop, or Server 2016 through Server 2022 on the server side. 
One thing that I'll point out about this vulnerability is that in order to exploit this vulnerability, an unauthenticated attacker could exploit this vulnerability by establishing a machine in the middle attack or some other local network spoofing technique. And then while they have that set up, sending a malicious Kerberos message to the client victim machine in order to spoof itself as the Kerberos authentication server. So to protect yourself from this vulnerability, you will only need to install the Windows update available to you on, on whatever product you're using. Next, I'll talk to CVE 2024-20700. This is a critical remote code execution vulnerability in Hyper-V, privately disclosed with no known exploits out in the wild. This has a base score of 7.5. The attack vector is adjacent. The attack complexity is high. No privileges are required and no user interaction is required to leverage this vulnerability. There are no known mitigations or workarounds for this. As far as affected software, it's server 2019 and 2016, as well as Windows 10 and Windows 11. Next, I'll talk to CVE 2024-0056. This is an important security feature bypass in the SQL data provider component. This one is privately disclosed to Microsoft with no known exploits out in the wild. This has a base score of 9.1, so this is the highest scored vulnerability in today's release. The attack vector is over the network, the attack complexity is high, no privileges are required, and no user interaction is required for this either. There are no documented mitigations or workarounds for this. Now this one's a, a little weird in that it affects a lot of different products, or rather the vulnerable component is in a lot of different products. For example, it's all versions of Windows that are in support, .NET 6, 7, and 8, Visual Studio 2022, SQL Server 2022 as well. Now from a Windows perspective, if you've installed the January cumulative update, you're protected from this. There are no extra steps. However, if you're using Visual Studio or SQL Server, there's updates for those products as well. And if you're consuming .NET 6, 7, or 8 in any of any builds that you're creating, you'll need to update that as well. And finally, CVE 2024-21318. This is an important remote code execution vulnerability in SharePoint Server. Privately disclosed, no known exploits out in the wild. This has a base score of 8.8 .8 on that scale of 10. The attack vector is over the network. The attack complexity is low. Low privileges are required, but no user interaction is required to leverage this vulnerability. There are no documented mitigations or workarounds for this. And the way a threat actor could exploit this is that it would take a, a, an authenticated attacker with site owner permissions or above that they would then be able to execute code remotely on that SharePoint server. So as far as affected software, it's SharePoint Server Subscription Edition, SharePoint Server 2019, and SharePoint Enterprise Server 2016. Okay, that's all I have to talk about today. I want to thank everyone for joining me as I talk about vulnerabilities, and I will talk to you all next month. Thank you.